Hello, it's Anouk here and welcome to the new design exercise from the Graphic Design School. So today we will look at how to use envelope distort in Adobe Illustrator, which can be found here. Objects, envelope distort, make with top object. Um, envelopes are objects that distort or reshape selected objects and we will use it on text today. I'm sitting behind a Mac, but uh, you can do this also behind any other platform. Before we start, just a quick reminder that it's important to stick to the brief so you know the constraints, the design goals and the allocated time. And also for this one, I recommend you start with a pencil and a piece of paper to sketch and brainstorm before you take your ideas into the computer. So let's get going. Um, I'm just going to start with giving you some background information on the project that I'm working on to show you guys an example of how to use envelope distort. Um, I'm going to design a logo and it's uh, for an initiative called the Bicycle Major. It started in Amsterdam and it's now expanding to uh, other countries in the world. Um, a major helps uh, to inspire more people to use the bicycle as their main mode of transport. A new logo was needed, so I started thinking uh, and brainstorming about this major. And I quickly knew that I didn't want to have this literal bike element in the logo. Uh, it just felt too obvious. Rather, I want to symbolize uh, the energy and the change a major is aiming for. So. I started thinking and I got to change inspiration, biking, which is all about movement. So I wanted to find a way to symbolize that. And uh, I realized that um, movement means that something that moves away from you gets smaller visually and if it moves towards you, it gets bigger visually. So I thought maybe I can use a shape that resembles this. And at the same time, um, the role of the major is also to shed some light on biking obstacles and possibilities in a city and to put great ideas in the spotlight. So I also thought about a spotlight or a bike light that would look like this uh, and realized that the shapes are actually pretty similar. So this is also the shape that starts small and gets wider. So I decided to use that shape as the object for this logo design. I already prepared some elements to show you quickly. So I ended up deciding to use this shape for my logo. I will move these so we can focus on the design. Um, and I needed a font. Uh, and a major like this wants to inspire and make a change, move things forward. So it needs to be bold and powerful. So I looked for a bold font to express that, uh, but I didn't want it to be too straight and serious as it's also still about the fun and the enjoyment of cycling. Um, it took me a while to find the right one. In the end, I found this one wasn't still, still wasn't happy with it. So I decided to uh, customize this font and ended up with this one. So I will quickly show you how I did that in case you're not familiar with it. So I adjusted the font by going to type, create outlines, and now these are objects that I can, shapes that I can change. So I simply just deleted all these white lines because I thought it was just getting too busy. So I did that with all the, oh, that was too much. In all those letters. And I wanted to make it a bit less straight, so I adjusted the corners, rounded them a bit. So I ended up with shapes like this, and then when you do that to all of them, you get this. I will remove this. So these are the letters that we're going to use, and this is the shape that we're going to use. In my sketches, I decided that putting it all in one shape felt wasn't, wasn't energetic enough. So I decided to um, use two shapes in the logo. 
uh, simply by using the same one but then the other way around. So it feels like I've got two directions going on at the same time. So Alt drag. So, oh, not working yet. There we go. And this one I'm just going to turn around, use the same shape, but then turn around, which is easily done by transform, reflect. And then I want to vertically reflect it. And there we go. So we have two shapes going in the two different directions. So I want bicycle in this shape, object and major like there. Um, when you use Envelope Distort, make sure the object is on top. Let's see, arrange, bring to front, then select both, go to Object, Envelope Distort, make with top object, and there it is. And the exact same I'm going to do here. I'm just going to make sure this one is on top. Arrange, bring to front, select both, Object, make with top object and there it is so now i have bicycle major in that shape that i was aiming for and then it's a matter of playing around Could put it here which is cool it would be nice and more playful to put it here make sure they are there's a guide a little bit there yeah so, I ended up with the logo roughly looking like this, using Envelope Distort. And then, as you can see here, I ended up using that same shape for various elements of the logo design. So you can see the shape in the logo, uh, but also I made a variation, a short version and a little icon. And I will use that same shape. Now, like we explained in our brief, it doesn't matter what level you are. Uh, just follow this video and the examples and explanations and then choose the level in the brief that fits you. There's a few final things that I wanted to show about envelope distort with this example, which looks horrible, but it's a good way to show you what I mean. Um, so, for example, you want to do the word fish and you create um, a shape, an object that looks like a fish. There's different possibilities that you can consider when you start thinking about what you want to design. You could use the whole complete shape, like I've done here, and put the word fish in there. Uh, the thing that I noted is that when a shape gets more complicated and it's more small elements in it, the words are often harder to read. So make sure you can still read the words and it doesn't get too complicated. So here, I think it will be necessary if you would do it like this to adjust the H and start making it better to read. You could also choose to just only use the oval part, which is a very simple shape, and use that one for envelope distort, so only the oval shape as an object. And that happened here, so you can see I used the oval for fish and then added a tail and a little mouth to the shape. Or you can decide to play around with it to um, cut this shape into different pieces and then, for example, use a little mouth for the F, use the big body, the oval for the I and the S, and then use the tail for the H, and then you would get something like this. So play around with it and try to find out what works for your word and your shape, but avoid very complicated shapes. And you can always, once you are working in it, change things around. So for example here, the word fish, you can still, um, well, let's do it with this one, I think that's better. You can still adjust it. So here to me, the F, I'm not happy with it. You can go to object, so select it first, go to object, envelope distort, and go to edit envelope. So now I can adjust the shape. So if I think this little mouse isn't clear enough, go to the direct selection tool. And for example, tweak it a bit more so the mouth gets clearer or... So you can see, you can still adjust elements. You could also, it, it isn't great yet, but 
just wanted to show you how you can adjust it. Here, for example, we could think, okay, maybe you want to adjust the S a bit more. So we've got the letter selected now. And what we can do uh, is go to, because this is still a font, and I want to adjust the font and customize it. I would go to Type, Create Outlines. And now I can start adjusting. Go to Direct Selection Tool. And maybe it works if the S gets bigger here. Just play around with it. So as you can see, it also changes here and moves it a bit closer. Double click to get out. So these are different ways to play around and adjust and optimize your design. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. When you are done and you've got your word or your logo, it's all perfect, you tweaked everything you wanted to do and you're done, you can expand it. But if you want to do that, make sure you keep the original. So you can always go back and change it easier than once you only have the expanded logo left. I would create a new layer. So copy the original. I've got everything selected. Come on, see. Go to layers. Create a new layer. And then in this layer, we will command V, paste it in. And I'm just going to lock that layer, hide it and give it a new name so I can easily find it. Let's see, original, no, cool. And then we will work in the layer. I'm just gonna bring that to the front, okay. So now we have the original here and I'm gonna expand this one. Select both, go to object, back to envelope distort, and click expand. And now you can see that the envelope distort shape object is gone and the letters are left in the shape of the original object so you can do that as well in the end and that's it good luck with the brief and please don't forget to show us what you've made we'd love to see all your designs we're very curious uh, and we'll also share some of your work on our social media well good luck till next time bye